You're listening to Well Met. Well Met. A Hearthstone podcast brought to you by blizzpro.com. Well Met. Hey everybody, welcome to episode number 81 of Well Met. We are a Hearthstone podcast brought to you by blizzpro.com. That was really hard for me to say, I'm not going to lie. I have not said that in like a month, and I almost said payload in Overwatch at least twice. So, but yeah, it feels really good to be back. Um, We almost had the full crew, but instead... It's just myself and Mr. J.R. Cook. J.R., hey, man, how you doing? Hey, John, it's good to be here. Uh, you know, here after the presidential debate, we decided to record after that uh, thing, as people would call it. And, and it, feels, <laughs> it feels like we should have done PvP tonight. But, of oh, course, man. we don't have a third person. Uh, just to get into the, uh, I don't know, celebration of... You mean Politics. a little bit of player versus player, you know? Uh, yeah, because I feel like we would have been more entertaining. I don't know, so. man. I was pretty entertained. <laughs> we're definitely not going to go into it because that no, is we're not. <laughs> that is hella stupid. But we will talk about our weeks in Hearthstone. But before we do, Kevin could have made it, uh, couldn't make it, feeling a little under the weather. And so uh, it's just going to be J and R, J R and I, J and R and I, you and me and them. It'll be just (laughs) us tonight and it'll be uh, a lot of fun. We don't get to do shows together very often. So I'm really excited to just. Yeah, we we totally don't do one every week. (laughs) We're going to skip the the girl talk this week and it'll just be J R and I and, you know, doing our thing. So Jared, tell me about your week in Hearthstone, man. Yeah, so uh, I, I now that the balance changes are in place, I've been playing. Uh, I, I've been tweaking more and more of my warlock deck. I think I'm on my sixth or seventh iteration, still trying to figure out what feels good. Um, it's got a pretty uh, decent win rate uh, right now, a uh, really high win, win rate, like 70, 75 percent. But the sample size I have the right highest now win is rate, the highest, the win highest. Rate. Win Ask rate. any any other deck the highest the highest win rate. Everyone knows this. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So, um, but the, the 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 problem is like it just doesn't have. I, I don't have a very high sample size with it yet. Um, I I think right now I'm sitting at 20 games with it, and that's just not a very big enough sample size. Um, but I'm sitting at like 15 and five, or something to that effect. Nice. Um, but what I'm rank still. Are you at? I'm still. Uh, I want to say like 13 or 12 or something. Okay, something that's like right that. where I am too. So yeah. Yeah, it's not. I haven't had a whole lot of chance to play standard this week. Um, still tweaking that. Still trying to figure out if abusive sergeant uh, still belongs in that deck or not. Um, playing around with wrath guard, trying to see if I think that's a good card or if I should switch to something like argent horse rider or something like that. Um, still playing around with little things like that uh, in tiny night of evil, which I think I might end up taking out. Uh, it used to do work for me, but. Not as much anymore. Uh, so I think this week I'm going to really try to tweak it more um, with the current meta. Um, I'm ha- actually having really good success against Shaman, which is really strong in the meta still. Um, so that's a good thing. Um, other than that, I've been playing a little bit of Wild, too. I think I'm actually ranked higher right now in Wild than wow. I am in Stan. Um, be- you're, a, you're a Wild child. I get yeah, it. You're a Stallion. I, you can't be I tamed. I hadn't really played... I hadn't really played wild yet. And I'm like, you know, I, I, I want to try it out and play. I, I had some priest. Secret uh, Paladin. I had some, no, I had some priest uh, uh, quest to do. So that's why I started playing that because I'm like, I'll try Nazoth Priest, which is actually really good. You coward. Uh, wild deck. You coward. And, uh, Go in and I standard. Play, play it in no. standard. No, I'm not going to play it in standard because it will get crushed. And wild, it's a really good deck. Hey, man. Because some... it can play things that aren't in standard. 
there's, make it really good. there are some people, some very important people in the Hearthstone, um, in, in the Hearthstone scene. Um, I know them very well, but there are some important people who say that Dragon Priest may be poised to make a comeback here. So, it, it's true. Uh, I have there's, heard people say that as well. Haven't seen it yet. Haven't seen have it either. It. But, you know, it, if they say, I think it might be coming back, I think we're going to see people start to play around with that archetype a little bit. I think Tyronda helped. Definitely. Yeah, that's, just that's why that's why I was playing Priest and Wild was because of that. Yeah. So that's that's pretty cool, man. I'm glad that you're you're having fun being the deck engineer of the podcast. I've yeah, I'm really been, enjoying it. Good. Good. I've been just kind of chilling, running whatever. Um most of my time I'm playing right now is on the way to and from work or on my lunch breaks because I'm trying to get up to uh, platinum uh, in Overwatch, and that's been kind of taking a lot of my like primo sit down in the studio and play Hearthstone. But I still have gotten a lot, a lot of time in. So um, last time we checked in, I actually hit rank five on NA, EU, and um, uh, Asia Pacific. So. Um, I, I didn't go like all in on rank one, but I actually didn't do, I did play quite a bit of Hearthstone and I'm just trying to build up my international collections, um, for when I eventually defect. So, so are you playing those free to play then? Yep. Um, uh, most, most, mostly. Yeah. Mostly. Mo yeah. Totally. Totally. Didn't, didn't spend any, anything <laughs> at all. Why would I, why would I do that? I I don't know. Um, but the name of the game right now is definitely um, beating shaman or playing a better shaman than your shaman opponent. So that's yeah. really fun. I think um, on EU, I saw like something ridiculous, like 30, 35 percent shamans. So it's yeah getting pretty ridiculous here. Um, I think we're going to talk about it later, but I believe one of the meta reports said that uh, the pre-nerf shaman, the win rates were up close to where Undertaker Hunter was before it got nerfed. So uh, we'll see if this nerf is good enough here, um, but we should probably go into news. Yeah. Yeah. What um, else do we did, need to hit on? We, uh, there's a couple of BlizzCon things like, uh, oh, yeah, I, I forgot to mention. Yes. I forgot to mention. We talked about it last week. Uh, where we we're going to do like a BlizzCon uh, meetup or something like that. So uh, I know that uh, uh, John and Kevin are doing the Con Before the Storm stuff on Thursday night. Uh, so if you want to go check out their panels for Hearthstone and Oh, yeah. Uh, Can Overwatch, I add something about that? Go so ahead. So because, because we're going to be there, um, Kevin and I will be at Con Before the Storm. I'm hoping that other people will be too from BlizzPro, but Kevin and I will. Kevin will be sitting in on a panel with um uh oh my god uh Garrett Weinzerl and I will be actually moderating the oh, yeah, Overwatch yeah. panel That's right. so I'm going to be moderating that panel and we've got some really really amazing talent who's going to be sitting in Rosh from the payload is going to be there too so she's going to be representing it's going to be a lot of fun this year so I hope that you guys come and check it out but yeah. Continue more BlizzCon yeah, stuff. Yeah, but, but if you're not able to check it out, we're going to do a BlizzPro-wide meetup um, on Friday evening at 6 p.m. And uh, it will be right outside the entrances of uh, Hall B and C. It's going to be right in between there. So it'll be in that little hallway um, between the outside doors and the uh, uh, doors that get you into the convention. Uh, the reason why we're doing that is we're going to be recording our day one uh, reactions for uh, BlizzCon. So we're going to be busy doing that, uh, but we'll also be able to meet up with everybody there. And it just seemed like a great way since all the Blizz Pro people are getting together for that anyway. It'd be a great way for our fans to also come and uh, say hi. Yeah, you guys so. should definitely come say hi because... We like to meet you, and yep. we're had we're giving away one, a Friday night to do it. So yeah. yeah, well, it'll be it'll probably be about an hour. So we'll probably be there between six and seven on Friday, and then we um, start drinking. 
right <laughs> um if we already haven't started but yeah. <laughs> true um but the one other thing uh that i want to bring up is we talked about this last week and we were going to do a contest um our twitch prime stuff has been really successful actually and that's been a great promotion that twitch has done with amazon we've jumped up subscribers by a lot uh like more than double uh which is right. awesome and uh if you want it like if you are in one of those countries that you're not able to get amazon prime or you haven't signed up for amazon prime and you want to get the Tarande uh, uh priest uh, uh hero um we do have a couple codes that we're going to be given away um so to uh enter this uh just tweet at us at well met podcast uh, tweet us your priest deck list uh, that you're playing and use the hashtag make priest great again because we're go. going to go with the debate team as well. So um, if you want, we, we, we'll give away those uh, before the show next week. Yes, we will. So unless I make them push it back because it, not everyone gets to listen to it, but it will be next week. I made it. I'm executive decision that was already made. Next week on the show. Next week we'll announce it and be done. I had to yep. I had to think that one through. That was weird. All right. <laughs> oh. All right. We ready? Anything else? Yeah. Any more housekeeping? No. All right. Housekeeping. This week in Hearthstone, Heroes of Warcraft. Oh man, JR, we got some stuff to talk about this week. But before we do, we do want to thank our friends of the show, Albert T, The Real Ben, and Coral. Thank you so, so much for your support of the show. Uh, well Met is completely funded and supported by our fans. So if you like the show, have a little extra change jangling in your pocket, head on over to, to patreon.com slash wellmetpodcast and find out how you can get involved. We've got some pretty, pretty cool perks, I think. So um, I think there's something for everyone, and you should definitely check it out. All right, so we do have some new stuff to talk about. As always, thank you, Hearthstone team, for giving us constant, constant uh, material to go over every week. First, uh, we do have a BlizzCon merch sale that goes on. The pre-sale goes, um, starts happening on October 12th, and those are for BlizzCon attendees and virtual ticket holders. So if you've got, if you're attending BlizzCon or you're a virtual ticket holder, you have access to this. Correct? Am I right? You are correct. Okay, yes. good. Okay. I I was worried. You get, I got the <laughs> little... Concernicus brows from you, and I didn't oh. know if I'm like, uh oh, what did I say wrong? So that no, is I think true. it's because on my Twitter feed, this picture of Hillary Clinton came up, and that's probably why. Fair, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. It's the debate is trickling into well, Matt. We'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll try to keep it to a minimum. Uh, we did have a, a a video that was posted, and uh, Jr is going to post it into the Twitch chat for us because he's great, and uh, because I know putting you on the spot. Uh, it's going to go on sale October 12th. Um, from the Hearthstone stuff that they teased, they really only teased one and a half things. Uh, they teased a huge, comfy Hearthstone blanket, which I am definitely getting. And there's a, I believe it's from Cute But Deadly, it's a Taronda. So it's a little figurine, really cute. And yeah, so those two things, and it's not, I don't know if that's under Hearthstone or World of Warcraft. It's honestly both. Um, but yeah, so those are the two things that they introduced for Hearthstone. What do you think of what we've seen so far? Are you going to get that nice big blankie to cuddle up for during Well Met, during player versus player? Yeah, um, no, I, I'm going to get it and I'm going to bring it to BlizzCon and... Uh... We're going to hang out with it during the uh, opening ceremony. Cuddle buddies? So, yeah, totally. It gets a little cold in there in the convention hall in the morning. We'll so have, we'll have we'll a totally new, want to keep warm. We'll have a new Patreon tier where <laughs> if you give a certain amount, you can be cuddle buddies with John, Kevin, and JR in the giant Hearthstone blanket. I feel like we would... Never mind. Okay. What, el what else did yeah, you like not, about this, JR? What else did you like? Um, I, you know, the, the thing that 
I thought was really cool. I don't actually want them, but my wife is crazy for them is the uh, the Murloc slippers. Everybody loves those. I like she They're because so they dumb. make the little sound. Yeah. And I'm just like, I get it. OK, I guess I get it. We'll overspend and pay the I don't even know how much they are. They're probably like 50 bucks or something like that. Uh, because all Probably. this merchandise is not cheap. Because they make noise, with. right? They make noise. Um, they they, they are kind of neat, but uh, um, you will not catch me wearing them. You couldn't pull uh, them unless off. There JR. is a Patreon tier that involves that. Um, yeah, you couldn't pull it off. Sorry, <laughs> no, I, I hate no, to break it to I, you. It's just. But I'm a, I'm always a big fan of the pins. Like they started the pin collection stuff a couple years ago, and uh, they they do these. Uh, uh, the pin collection stuff at BlizzCon, and uh, they're, they're these random pins, and you get to trade them while you're at BlizzCon, and then you can get the golden ones as well. And the golden ones this year look really cool, and they just have a bunch of different Blizzard characters on them. And uh, I'm a really big fan of that. I don't uh, get it. I don't get it. Help me get it, because I don't understand pins. We were at TwitchCon last week, and everyone was giving away pins. Now I did. Right. Get the uh, the Hearthstone pins, which were the Tyronda card back, which are really cool. I think I found a way to sneak out like six or seven. So I don't know if I'm going to give them away. I know a couple people have already asked for one, which is why I'm just like, I'm just going to grab a bunch because I know that eventually people will be like, hey, do you have one? Can I get one? I want um, one. <laughs> yeah, but no. Uh, yeah. No. I'll ask Jimmy. He'll help me out. Uh, we already we already made a pact that we wouldn't give Jr. any pins. We're not going to feed your pin addiction anymore. This well, has to stop. All right, all right, all right. But the <laughs> pins are pretty okay. cool. Um, th the only thing is like everything usually has a lot of really cool merchandise involved with it. And I feel like Hearthstone, like yeah, they have the blanket. Um, I feel like Hearthstone just hasn't had a lot of really really cool merchandise like the other games. Uh, but at the same time, it's really tough to really do anything with the Hearthstone that would make sense. Like, if you want something Hearthstone, Hearthstone related, go ahead and get something from like World of Warcraft. Uh, you know, like the Tron Day little mini that they have there. Um, but like, you know, just a, a blanket's pretty cool. But just some of the other stuff, I'm just like, eh, I can live without it. I, but the I other think neat. I can't. I don't play Heroes of the Storm or Diablo, but thankfully I'm not super attracted to any of the stuff they announced in, They announced for those two games because I, I think you're totally right. Although they got yeah. some that Tracer hoodie. Katie is all about that Tracer hoodie. I don't yeah, know how it's going to look on guys. I don't know. I, I, don't, I won't wear one. If somebody's going to try me. and pull one off, though, it is going to be me. And so we'll have to we'll have to see if um, how how unisex they are they the, how unisex they are but I have a feeling not so much so we should be finding out more before the twelfth but you won't find out more about what's going to be a part of that sale until next week so uh, October twelfth hang out and then we'll probably talk about any of the other stuff that came out next week as well. Also in the news, so we have the Hearthstone Priest Extravaganza. So uh, from the Play Hearthstone team, they say, to celebrate the announcement of Twitch's newest service, Twitch Prime, and Hearthstone's newest hero, Taronda Whisperwind, Twitch has lined up some of your favorite Twitch partners to play a variety of different Hearthstone exhibitions. So we've already had week one, which was um, Hafu and Chess Dude, Trump, and VLPS. Week two, though, is coming up. So on the 11th, which is going to be Tuesday, um, we've got uh, Crip and Tice. That's maybe one of my favorites. And then on the 14th, we've got Amaz and Amnesiac. Week three, we've got uh, Geek and Sundry uh, for both the Monday and or the Tuesday... Tuesday and, and Thursday. Thursday streams. And then week four, we have Dog and Savits. So they're going to be playing some Priest, celebrating that a little bit, I guess. Just they need somebody to play Priest. 
I suppose. <laughs> so we're like, tell you what, let's make the most famous Hearthstone streamers and overall streamers. Let's make them do it. So that will be going on over the next couple of weeks. And the link is in the show notes for you. If you want to check those out, JR, will you be partaking in this? Um, I will likely not be watching it because these are all during times that uh, I'm going to be at work and won't be able to. Um, but I think it is really cool that uh, that I, I really like this promotion. I know a lot of people didn't uh, because it kind of uh, paywalled Tron Day into just certain countries because it wasn't available uh, everywhere. Um, but at the same time, like the Twitch Prime promotion and everything has really helped out the community that is streaming. Um, like I like I mentioned earlier, um, you know, it's doubled our subscribers, more than doubled our subscribers on Blizz Pro, and uh, that's that's huge for us because we're able to do some awesome things with some of that money. Like uh, I recently launched a uh, a thing for our, our team members uh, to recognize ones that are doing awesome, and then we have a raffle at the end of the month. Uh, for our team members where they can win like a uh, uh, $50 worth of like Amazon gift cards and stuff like that. Uh, so that's what these subscribers money is going for is being able to uh, pay some of the people that help out with us. Um, so it's really cool that they're doing this. And uh, I, I think it's cool that Hearthstone, the Hearthstone team is also um, pushing uh, the this community and these live streamers out there as well uh, with this, even though these are, really big names to begin with um it's still a um it's still in the right direction the heroes of the storm team is doing an awesome job with live streaming and promoting live streams and i think the hearthstone team can learn a lot from that and this is a step in the right direction totally agree with you i think that's uh, a great observation so uh, i'll definitely be tuning in i'll always catch some of the vods maybe Hopefully some of it will be interesting, I guess, is the only thing I can say. Like, can't all be boring, right? Who wants to watch 20-minute Hearthstone games? But, you know. <laughs> now, if I was to watch any of them, I think Crip and Tice will be great. Crip and Tice will, will definitely be good. Um, yeah. I love Tice. Did you watch the, the video? So last month... Uh, it was Tice and Life Coach. They bet who could hit Legend yeah. first, and the loser had to go bungee jumping. Did you watch that video? I watched part of the video. I didn't watch the full thing. Freaking because Tice. Because I get anxiety with just watching bungee jumps. Freaking Tice is so adorable. So he did it. They went bungee jumping. And then, of course, Life Coach is just s- such... I don't even know. He's in a league of his own as a human being. He, like, wins, and he still goes bungee jumping. You can't touch him. You can't intimidate him with anything. He loves fun and life too much, I guess. So uh, that was pretty cool. I thought that was cool. I um, So I love Tice. I think Tice, you know, still probably one of, for sure, top five Hearthstone players in the world. Probably top three. I would say yep. maybe second to Zixo. And, and he has a very real uh, possibility of being the BlizzCon champion this year. Yes, he does. Yeah, he's got an amazing Hearthstone track record. Um, last but not least, uh, what's going on with the Brawl this week, JR? Yeah, so the Brawl this week was the, uh, you remember the chess event from Karazhan. Uh, the Brawl this week was that, basically. And we talked about this. Right when uh, the week that that uh, chess event came out uh, in in the game, and we talked about how that should be a tavern brawl, um, and the way that they did it was uh, you you both have the white knight ability where you can move uh, things around. So um, that was pretty fun. I played a handful of games with it. Um, while it was fun, I got bored boring really uh, quickly after a few games. Uh, once you kind of because you can kind of get in a rhythm where you kind of figure it out. And then if your opponent does it doesn't, then you just kind of destroyed them. Um, and it was starting to get to that point because I could tell it like the people I was playing against, they had just played it for the first time. Um, however, there's a pretty good article uh, over on the Hearthstone official site uh, with Peter Whalen that uh, talks about the design of that encounter in the Tavern Brawl. And it's definitely worth checking out. 
Yep, definitely do that. It'll be in the show notes for you. And Did you play it at all? I, I'm really bad at getting to the tavern brawl. Um, I never, I ever, do- ever play the ones that require you to make a whole deck because I ain't no ain't nobody got time for that, JR. And the other stuff I'm usually too lazy, and I have most of, if not all, the cards. Um, I've got to be really close at this point. So it's like, why, why am I doing this? Yes, sure, for yeah. dust, but I just spend money on the game anyway. For me, I really like uh, p- playing at least once a week to get my card pack, even though I have all the cards. Uh, the dust is really helpful um, to allow me to spend less money in the future. Not important. Just spend it anyway. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. All right. Well, JR, we're going to just keep trucking through. It's kind of weird. We go through this so much faster when Kevin's not here because <laughs> we don't have the four-minute rants. But concise and smart and brilliant but four minutes uh we're gonna go straight into the meta you ready yeah let's do it be shaman or join shaman oh oh, no that's right wow yeah i did that because really that's that's what the meta is right now beat shaman or join shaman (sighs) <sighs> and that's All unfortunate. Right. That's it is, unfortunate. It is. It, it's happened to Hearthstone a few times, though. This is not the first time this has happened. People need to chill out a little bit. But, yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit. So we got the Vicious Syndicate Data Reaper Report number 21. Uh, just came live on uh, October, October 6th. 6th. And just a disclaimer, there is only two days of post-nerf stats here. So we're still talking a little bit pre-nerf stuff, but it's still worth talking about because, well, we need to. So, um, mid-range shaman just absolutely dominating here. In overall usage, 13% of decks out of that archetype eclipses seven of the other eight classes for total usage yeah. for that entire class, which is insane. And then, of course, mid-range hunter and secret hunter um, coming back. And then, of course, you see um, control warrior, which is kind of a natural. It used to be a kind of natural counter to mid-range shaman, but with some of the new techs being put into mid-range shaman. You're not seeing that as much anymore. And then you've got Temple Mage, which actually is about... It's not a great matchup, but it's about 50-50 against a mid-range shaman. Does really well against aggro shaman as well. So that's kind of what we're seeing in the top three to four classes. I missed over... Or I skipped over Druid. Yog Druid of course, is doing well, but is being seen much less um, now that the Yogg changes have gone there. And it has felt good to me. I've played against Yogg quite a bit. There's this weird Yogg Reno Mage and um, a couple, I've seen Yogg Druid a couple times, and it just, it definitely hasn't been as strong. Yogg can't snowball yeah. even after it's dead. I'm actually really liking Yogg right now. Like, like it, it from it a was balance perspective. Powerful. Are What's you saying? That? Are you saying from a balance perspective? Uh, perspective, you feel like it's balanced. Right, right. Um, you know, Yog was a really good card in the sense that it could completely like change the game for you and snowball in a way. Um, it still has the potential to do that, but just not as much. Um, in fact, the very first Yog that got played against me, um, its very first spell was it naturalized itself. So I'm like, oh, thanks for the two cards, bro. And he conceded. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. So it's it, it's a very, it, it's one of those cards that it, there's a lot more risk involved with playing it. And that's the way Yogg should have been to begin with. And Because that's the way when we first, very first, um, were looking at these cards before we ever got to see them play. That's what we were saying about Yogg is there's, it's a very risk reward uh, type thing. But it ended up when, when it actually got to see play and we actually saw it. There wasn't as much risk. Now there is. Um, so right. I definitely like the card a lot better. 
Um, and it's really cool now if you do get an awesome yog off, uh, whereas before you were seeing it happen all the time. Right. Yep. It it definitely negates that snowball effect that even after it's right. destroyed itself and everything else, it, it it isn't still going, which also makes sense, I guess. Um, and it's and it's still an enjoyable card, which was what I was hoping they would keep, uh, because I I do like the card. I know lots of people don't, but there are a lot of people that do. People. So with I think brains. it's cool that they still kept that. <laughs> people with brains. Yeah, hey so now. thankfully Yogg is out, but man, Shaman. Yeah. Shaman. I'm looking, so I'm looking at the matchups here, and I'm going to slide this right over JR's face. <laughs> That's fair. And this is how the new I- setup works. I can just do this. This is mid-range Shaman right here. See that? Mid-range Shaman. And it has... Two negative uh, matchups, aggro mage and freeze mage. And everything else is at least semi 50 50 or green. Come on. That is so freaking good right now. I can't even believe it. Yeah, it's one of those things right now where the changes that they made to shaman were like really hurt aggro shaman. Which aggro shaman was also a problem, um, but you had that mixture of aggro and mid range, and they were running a lot of the same cards. So the balance changes they made, they thought you know would likely hurt both. Um, aggro shaman definitely took the bigger hit. Um, oh, you're for not sure. seeing it as Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Uh, the problem with mid range shaman is still like a-, a lot of their tools are just still there. Like mid range shaman's early game isn't as good anymore um just because a tuscar totemic is no longer really a viable card to play um but they it still has everything else that made the the deck good um you know uh uh bumping up the mana cost of rock biter weapon um once again it it, it ended the early the game more than the mid-range game so it's you know it, it doesn't surprise me a lot that mid-range shaman still has a lot of really good tools, especially when you get, start getting into, uh, you know, it's got good board clears with Lightning Storm. Uh, turn, you know, four and five, you usually see a uh, thing from below uh, because they've been playing totems and whatnot. Uh, and then, you know, turn six to eight, you start seeing the, uh, uh, what is it, the Thunder Bluff variant? Is that, I, I, Valiant. for some reason, I can't, Valiant, yeah, um, which makes their shaman you know their totems more powerful and it depends on which version of midrange shaman you are seeing like there's a version that's playing the uh the wicked witch uh which uh i well you play spells and it makes more totems um and then you know you're buffing them up at the same time right. it's just I'm it's not... just a real it just has a lot of it has a lot of good minion tools it has a lot of good um uh spells which allow you to to remove minions or go to face. It just has a lot of versatility. And unless right. you just completely change shaman right now, uh, it's going to be really good until a lot of these cards rotate out. Totally agree. I'm not totally sh- uh, sold on like the all in on totem shaman shaman. I actually like the, uh, the version that's running spirit claws and Azure yeah, Drakes. I do too. Um, that seems better. The only thing that I've noticed with Shaman right now is three and four, um, turn three and turn four are really awkward for yeah. for Shaman right now because um, they're not really running Flame Wreath Faceless just because there are so many good turn five plays right. for Shaman with Azure Drake, with uh, Thunder Bluff, Valiant, um, it's not a five drop per se, but having the thing from below there is sometimes, especially on curve, you're only playing it. If you curved out well, you're playing it for five mana sometimes. So there's just a lot of awkwardness with that, uh, flame wreath faceless in there, but there's really nothing being played on three, right? That's usually where, uh, you're clearing the board with lightning storm or something to that effect, maybe. Right. Yeah. There's, yeah, you've got a couple spells. Um, you might one mana spell something in hero power and then play a totem. Yeah. yeah. But it's just, it's, 
it's just awkward for sure. It's definitely not as strong as it once as it once was. But even this guy's toast did a great video about the probability of shaman using some uh, stats from was it Hearthstone replay that he used the stats from. Um, I anyways don't he, think I got to see the video. He um, did a video and basically it was all about taking a look at the win percentages when different totems are rolled based on when you played uh, the, when you played Tuscar Totemic on turn or on curve. And when you did the basic totems, they had like somewhere between, it was in the, the mid forties uh, percentage wise to where if you played Tuscar Totemic on, on curve and you got a basic totem, you, it was basically like a, a 45% ish. I think it was 46 and 47% uh, win rate when you played that on mm. curve then. And then when you played it and you got one of the special totems like totem golem um, or manatide totem or flame tongue totem, it, the win rates were like 60 plus percent. And so that was, that's a huge turn three, right? And so having that kind of gone has definitely been a hit for sure. Yeah. Um, part of the problem, though, is even though Shaman took some hits once again, it was a lot of because of the early game, but there's not a lot of decks out there that flip that around uh, to uh, hurt Shaman in the early game either. Um, so even though their early game is, is a little more awkward, um, and they still have the best uh, late game or mid, mid to late game mechanics, uh, in the game right now, other than Call of the Wild, which got nerfed as well. So they ha they still have that extra turn against Hunters, and then um, other decks are just having a hard time, you know, keeping up. Right. Uh, and I, I, the only other decks that I can think of that could really do that is Druid. And I do think you're going to start seeing Druid um, start climbing the ranks a little bit. Um, this was showing Druid at, like, around fifth or so even though yog took a you know took a balance change a, a nerf um i i don't think people have been playing druid um to its full potential yet and i still think that there are a lot of really good uh, uh things that you can do with druid to possibly compete with shaman uh the only problem is shaman has a lot of really good board clears with maelstrom's uh, uh portal and lightning storm yeah, I don't know. I'm, you know, Druid has always uh, struggled against Hunter, um, right. specifically like mid range Hunter. And I think of mid range Shaman a lot like the old mid range Hunter. And I, I think right now, without that hard removal um, and without the ability to easily or effectively clear a board short of swipe, which is, as far as class board clear goes, is probably one of the worst in the game for um, that mid-range type flood uh, type play style. Um, it, it would be tough. We would need to see something new. Um, I know for sure that right now Beast Druid uh, doesn't do well against mid-range or aggro shaman. And I also know that C'Thun Druid doesn't do well either. Yog Druid does less worse than the others but still isn't i think it's some like 40 to 45 percent win rate i think is somewhere where it's at that's probably where i would peg it so yeah um, know, the success the see. success that i've had with shaman so far has been with my warlock deck and uh just beating shaman down very very quickly and uh, uh keeping board control uh through the entire match um where i'd struggled with um, a little bit here and there against Shaman is when I would run out of cards and then they would just snowball uh, beyond that. Right. Um, but if I can beat them down early and uh, uh, keep that board control and uh, not allow the game to even get to like turn eight, um, it, it's it's been pretty successful for me against Shaman. Uh, so that's that's the way that I would look at beating Shaman is playing aggressive um, so that they don't you know, take control of the board and then snowball. Because once Shaman gets going, 
there's no stopping them. It, right. It's very difficult to turn that around. Right. You can't outpace. I mean, so the, the way I find a beat shaman is you're either, um, it, it's, it, it, it's, you have to be at a different pace than them. So you either have to do it faster with some sort of aggro deck, which you, you see with, um, aggro, um, aggro priest, I think is something or not aggro priest, <laughs> aggro mage, um, is something that people are bringing just to beat shaman. But here's the thing, a deck like aggro mage sucks about most or against right. most of the rest of the field. So even though you're beating shaman and that probably feels good, it's probably not good enough to actually justify seeing play overall. You have to see at least what 40% shaman and beat yeah. them a hundred percent of the time to be able to justify that type of deck against and, and that, everything else. And that is the problem that I'm having with my Warlock deck is it doesn't beat Hunter very well. And Hunter is second in the meta, so you're see, still seeing a lot of Hunter decks. Um, and uh, that that's one of those things where, man, maybe, maybe the existence of Hunter doing so well is what's making Shaman extremely well. Because if you're playing to beat Shaman, you're probably not going to be able to beat Hunter. So you have to mix up the deck, and you're like, well, I'm not getting the win rates that I want, so maybe I play something else. But if I play that, then I'm going to get beat by Shaman all the time. Right. And uh, so maybe at that point, it's either, well, I should play Shaman or I should play Hunter. Right. Those are those are kind of the logical choices. And, you know, we joked in the beginning about beat Shaman. Or join Shaman. <laughs> But that's really the question you're kind of having to ask yourself is, am I going to try and beat it and play one of these offbeat decks or decks that are specifically teched to beat Shaman? Again, Aggro Mage is one of those that um, is designed, right? Is it Aggro? Am I thinking of the right one? Is it Aggro Mage? I haven't seen any Aggro Mage, but I wouldn't be surprised that there is one out there. It might not be actually it's not aggro mage it's not that's for um no it is it is for mid-range it's not for aggro shaman that's what it is okay i knew there was a rule that i'm i'm beating so jr you're beating shaman then right you're you're running something against shaman and you're gonna try to beat it and you're doing pretty well Sounds yeah. like sounds like you've got a pretty decent deck that does pretty well against the field and does well against shaman, which is kind of the dream right now. Yeah, um, it's doing fairly well, but once again, I have a very small sample size, so I, you know I can't say one way or the other. Maybe, and also you know, looking at my rank right now is still in the uh, mid teens, so. Um, you know, a lot of this uh, meta that we're looking at is a little bit higher rank, too. So I I had trouble with this deck uh, last month on not being able to hit Legend with it. And I probably should have been able to hit Legend last month if I had played something different. So I, I it, it's a trade-off, right? Like, right. I am so. uh, I'm, I'm doing the opposite. I'm just playing Shaman. I'm just playing yeah. it. I know it's I know it's a good deck. I want to it's a great way so something that I will say, yes, you're not creative if you're playing shaman. Yes, people will want to hit you in the face when you're playing shaman, but there's one thing that you get to do when you're playing the flavor of the month or best decks and that is practice the mirror match and see how you compare to other players of similar skill level with the same or similar decks. And those are two, in my opinion, really valuable pieces of information when it comes to playing a game like Hearthstone. We, you know, yes, it's when you're at rank five, JR, you're at rank five and you're playing and you lose, how often do you go, oh, he's just the better player? Let's, let's be, be on, it, okay. You're a little bit more depends. realistic, but how often, <laughs> how often would you say a normal person is like, oh, they're just the better player, right? Um, 
And a lot of it is because of what they are playing. Like, you're like, oh, they got a top deck here, or, um, you know, I'm never lucky, or things like that. Um, yeah, you feel that way a lot in Hearthstone. Um, but also, I think people need to stop making some excuses <laughs> in regards All if they want to become if they want to become a pro if you want to become excuses. a better player um you might want to look back at your games a little more often and seeing maybe where you made that mistake and then maybe see that no maybe they weren't lucky but in some cases yes very much uh they top decked the right thing and uh was able to beat you I like to see against player. against other shaman, especially if you get a large enough a large enough field, you know, you get to that 30, 30 game sample size plus to see, okay, I'm sixty five percent win rate against a uh, mid range shaman. Cool. I'm I'm running I'm piloting my deck well because we have the virtually the same deck or very similar decks. But now I, I can say, okay, I've got a decent handle on this deck. And if you're like, ooh, I've got like 35% win rate against Shaman, you're not a very good Shaman player. You probably should be playing that anyway. And I don't know. I really, I really like having that insight versus I'm winning right now because I have a deck that just counters everything else. Sometimes it's kind of fun to have the decks that are those 50% win rate matchups because then you're you're decided more along skill than you are um oh I have a Harrison Jones against this warrior so and I think it I think it really depends on what your goal is on when you play Hearthstone uh what you want to get out of your your time that you play uh if you want to you know if you want to hit legend every month um or if you want to beat a certain deck, or if you want to just learn certain decks and don't care about your ranks, or if you just want to play um, something that not everybody else is playing. You know, it, it really just depends on what you want to get out of the game at, right. that, at that moment. Totally agree. Um, what, else, what else do we need to hit on here for the meta report? Anything? Um, Priest... Is not at the end. Paladin is slightly below it. Uh, Control Priest is starting to move up the ranks a little bit, but not much. Mm -hmm. um, but Dragon Priest is starting to show up. Yeah, so. that's what I'm saying. If they find a way to make Dragon Priest really strong, or maybe the next expansion, maybe we'll have something for Dragon Priest... And either of those two things, and Dragon Priest could be dangerous. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. really excited to see what they come out with at BlizzCon, and I feel like I feel like BlizzCon is going to be a, a sh like really a huge thing for Hearthstone this year, just because of how things have kind of shaked out. Like I feel like HCT probably needs some changes to it. Um, the game, obviously needs some kind of shake up happening. Um, and I'm curious to see like what team five is going to say at BlizzCon and what they're going to reveal at BlizzCon. And I think it's going to be telling on what they're doing with this next expansion on maybe what the future of Hearthstone could potentially look at, look like, uh, because I would expect them and, and, you know, I would like to have Kevin here before we get into BlizzCon predictions and things like that. Um, but I would expect them to um, really look at how they're doing the rotating of sets and really reevaluating how that has worked and uh, maybe go a little bit of a different route. What that route is, I'm not sure. Um, but they, I feel like they're going to have to iterate on that a bit. I, I definitely want to wait until Kevin's here because right. I have so many thoughts, but I'm not I'm not going there. <laughs> Chat, you saw it. I'm 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 stepping back. I'm turning the cheek. We're not going there, but I'm really excited to talk about BlizzCon predictions. We'll probably do it next week. Next week is probably yeah. the We're right wanting week. to do it this week, but right. We need Kevin here because yes. it would be only fair because we 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 almost talked about it last week without you here, John. 
So, so we want to have everybody here. Here's something. There's there's a podcasting code. It's called Don't Cheat on Your Co-Hosts. There's certain topics that you just cannot talk about without everybody else here. So that is Blizzcon one of those things. Is BlizzCon one. predictions is one of those. New expansion announcements is another one of those. And I don't know. And um, uh, I yeah, no PvP. <laughs> yep, Maybe. no PvP. I don't know. <laughs> um, no, we did it already without Kevin with Garrett. So oh, that's that, not that's not true. That's not true. Right. I I don't know what the third one is. Those are the only two. BlizzCon predictions. Good enough. Is really, Good any enough. kind of prediction. Any kind of prediction. True. Yep. Predictions probably. All right. So. That's it for the meta this week. Let's jump into a little bit of esports news and we'll get out of here. Call it a little short, but we got we need a the 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 windpipe of Kevin to finish this all out. The pro corner. Mm, so good. So uh, a couple things, September final rankings are out. So if you want to check those out, they're over on the official Hearthstone website. In EU at least, Show took number one, Sweep number two, Knee Ability number three. So nice job. Nice job, guys. And I don't have the US one up here, I guess. So I can't tell you who did well in the United States, but that's all up there on the website. I'm sure people really carry, care about specific names anyways, but it is I up. Did the show do it with Zoo Warlock? I am not I believe, sure. Oh, I believe he did it with Zoo Warlock, and I, I think I read that in the Vicious Syndicate meta report about how why Zoo Warlock was still kind of relevant even with the nerf changes you and know that what? was one of the big reasons now that you're saying that i think i remember reading that as well so yeah. probably zoo um so ggs to everybody who um placed very good job we also had the eu last call invitational so the last call invitational is basically the last spot for blizzcon right so we actually this is pretty interesting personally i enjoyed the last call invitational stuff more than the the season championships personally because it was a lot of big names almost every big name and not that i don't want to see new players i just don't want to see just big names or just new players because i don't think that's fun i like to see the, the the back and forth between the two and not have it over th- you know three days and hundreds of matches and maybe only catch a couple of games but uh Pavel did defeat G2 RDU in the grand finals it was a not amazing series like the, it was played really well like nobody misplayed majorly that I can remember um but RDU was his a his yeah. Pavel's decks were chosen very well. He had a very good lineup for RD against RDU. And RDU, his draws were pretty, pretty dang awful. And Pavel's were pretty on point. Pavel is still yeah. an incredibly talented player. So I don't want to take anything away from Pavel because nobody can and should. Like you don't get that far in without being I mean, a great player. I mean, he almost Went to BlizzCon last year. Right. So he was one one round away, right? Right. So So it's kind of nice to see that redemption story of, you know, not getting in last year, but being able to get in this year. And uh it looked like he was going to get in unless RDU did a reverse sweep, which with his lineup I don't think he was gonna be able to do. Right. Because uh, Pavel had a three oh uh lead right there at the you know, he, he he took the first three very quickly. Right. So uh, that went on. And then last but not least, uh, Tempo Storm did have kind of a cool um, little format thing going on. It was the uh, World Series of Sealed number two. And basically yeah. it's uh, players having, you know, playing Sealed, um, which JR, can you really quickly explain what Sealed is? Because I know you're a huge fan of it from Magic the Gathering. 
Yeah, so the basic concept of sealed, you can't you can't really do it in Hearthstone within the client itself. Um, Temple Storm made a tool uh, that allows you to do this, but the basic idea of sealed is you get a set number of packs, um, you know, through various expansions. It could be the same one expansion or several. I believe Temple Storm does it uh, across uh, uh, expansions and uh, adventure modes. Uh, their tool allows them to open up packs as if they were in adventure modes. Um, and then you take the cards that you opened and you build uh, in Magic Gathering, you build a deck with them. In, uh, um, in Hearthstone, I believe you build did they build three decks or four decks and then allowed one ban? I don't I don't I didn't get to watch it. Um, so I don't know the exact format they did, but you build decks with the card pools that you have and then play a tournament uh, right. with it. Uh, so it's cool to see kind of what's what's fun about it is you're opening packs and you're like getting the cards that you really want and then trying to figure out okay I got these these really good cards and these really good cards and uh, what kind of decks do I want to make uh, to make use of these cards and uh, that that's where the deck building uh, strategy really shines and uh, and then you get to see it in play as well right huge so- huge fan of it in Magic and. I really wish that Hearthstone would have something like this in the client. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like it was a pretty big success from a format standpoint. There was some, uh, there, there's definitely some criticisms about the production value and some of the stuff. But one of my favorite parts was you have the, the regular sealed stuff going on. So you have the game, but they actually made a game outside of the game where they allowed the players to make bets on just about everything using some fake chocolate gold coins. And so you could make bets from anything. Like I think one was they stole a pack of, or a stack of coins from Forsen and then somebody bet that he wouldn't notice for like two minutes or something like that. And if they didn't, <laughs> they would get it. And like, so from stupid stuff like that to, oh, who's going to win? You had to bet at least um, 100 coins or whatever on who would win every round so it was pretty cool um, i definitely recommend to check it out but more than anything i love it when we see these types of tournaments and events because just you know your standard conquest best of five you know one band thing it gets it's just old getting kind of old right so uh that yeah. was pretty cool to to have that and you guys should definitely check it out it should be in the show notes as well um, yeah, and just having different formats, like even in Magic the Gathering or any collectible card game, is so huge for the the game and the uh, the health of the game. Uh, just because you have so many different options to play something, because if you're getting bored playing, you know, constructed all the time, you have something else uh, to to try out and play with your friends. Right. Totally right. But Jr., you know what? I think we need to get out of here. It's yep. time. Before we do, though, we do want to thank our friends of the show, Albert T., The Real Ben and Coral. Thank you so much for your support of the show. It means the world to us. Um, head on over to patreon.com slash wellmedpodcast. Find out how you can get involved. Um, no emails this week, as far as I can remember. Uh, but if you want to have some thoughts and want to uh, send them to us, I guess is the best way to say it. Email us at wellmet at blizzbro.com. And for Patreon, I'll take Patreon so then I, JR can take iTunes reviews. Uh, we do have one new patron, Kevin L. Thank you so much. Welcome to the family. And yeah, we've got some exciting stuff. Um, Patreon does have uh, a API that Discord has started using. So we're still working on the final implementation on that. Now it's going to work, but you can get kind of special... Yeah, any any of our patrons right now can do that. If you go on patreon.com and you go into your account, um, you can uh, connect Patreon to your Discord uh, 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 channel or your Discord uh, uh, username, uh, your account. That's what I was looking for. Um, and, uh, and we've set it up so any of our patron levels um, will get kind of a special patron title on the Blizz Pro Discord ch- server. Um, right now, that's all it gets you, but we're looking into uh, doing other things 
potentially with that maybe yes. like separate channels or you know maybe doing like game days or something like that and then those with the access to it can come in and join on that discord channel various things like that maybe we can do a group coaching thing to patrons you know just various we have tons of ideas we can do and uh so that uh integration will help us do that yep absolutely head over to patreon.com slash wellmed podcast to find out more and jr what about itunes reviews yeah, so we had uh, some five-star iTunes reviews uh, this week from the USA. Uh, we had from we had one from Rummage seventeen twenty-seven, and also one from VPL guy eighty-eight, and then from Canada we had Kevin. Uh, no wait, Anoyotron. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't mispronounce oh. Anoyotron, so you had to get I the almost, the name completely yeah. wrong. Yeah, and my it, favorite thing, so Anoyatron said he, this goes this podcast is so good it should be nerfed. Better than a 12 spell yog. We appreciate that. Nice. And if you'd like to give us a five star review, just head over to iTunes, type in Hearthstone. Uh, you'll find Well Met there. Uh, leave it there and I will I didn't do it this week, but I will try to mispronounce your name if you have a crazy awesome hard to pronounce name. Do it. Do it, chat, or make it something like mean not mean but something that is funny do that yep. do that thing all right let's go ahead and do our shout outs for the week uh jr anything for you um no real shout outs other than everybody that follows us and uh, uh follows us on twitter and chats with us and everything also uh, I, actually i do have one shout out. i want to give a shout out to dan who i was able to uh uh coach and play with Hearthstone oh, this yeah. past week. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, he's a he's a patron that uh, gets our coaching level, and uh, this was the first time that I got a coach, and we had a lot of fun, uh, kind of playing games back and forth. Uh, we were pretty even. He beat me a few times. I beat him a few times, and we played a lot of decks that we don't remember making. So it was a good All time. Right. So if you want to do that, definitely get on Patreon. And yeah, definitely. It's been a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing those. Uh, those coaching pieces. As for me, nothing major. I am streaming over at twitch.tv slash kick the tripod, playing some Hearthstone, playing some Overwatch, playing some WoW. It's a good time. So you should come on over and check it out. And that's it. So thanks for joining us for another episode of Well Met. Join us live every Sunday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time at twitch.tv slash blizzpro to get in on the conversation and follow the show on Twitter at Well Met Podcast for additional news and updates. WellMet is exclusively supported by our fans. If you love the show, you can find out how to become a part of the family at patreon.com slash wellmetpodcast. You can also find WellMet Apparel at store.blizzpro.com. A special thanks to Jake Buttono for our music and site designs for our graphic work. Uh, this has been episode number 81 of WellMet. We will see you next week. Bye, guys. See ya. Bye. Well Met is a production of BlizzPro.com. The show records live at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time at twitch.tv slash blizzpro. To get the latest news and information about the show, follow us on Twitter at Well Met Podcast or join us on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash well met podcast. If you would like to support the show, you can find out how at patreon.com slash well met podcast. Well,